In this tutorial, I'll go over how to use custom triggers. Custom triggers alone are not very visual, so I'll show you some examples of what you can do with them. These examples include creating timed events, such as temporarily disabling a button, organizing and reusing triggers for easy logic, creating synced toggles, And finally, performing different logic depending on if you were the person pressing the button. Before I begin, I want to say that when working with custom triggers, you need to make sure you get the broadcast type set properly. I've done a bad job in my previous tutorials by skipping over broadcast types. So to start, let's go over these. Out of all of these broadcast types, I can first split them into two different categories, local and global. Global are the ones that when triggered, everyone in the room will see and perform the action. Local means that only you, the local player, will perform the action. One issue that people may not realize when starting off with trigger development is that you can accidentally chain global triggers together. This means that everyone will perform an action and then everyone will tell everyone to perform another action. I have actually caused people to crash because of this before I understood what local triggers were. In the local category, there's only one, and it's local. When using custom triggers, I recommend that most of your triggers are actually local to avoid the issue of chaining broadcasts. In the global list, we have everything else. There are nine global broadcast types, and then this can be mapped into a grid of three by three. One distinction is who can initiate it, and the other is how this event is handled for late joiners. The three different groups that can initiate triggers is everyone, master, and owner. Master and owner are the only ones that can really be confusing here. Master is the current world instance owner. This is not the map creator. Master is the person who has been in the world instance the longest. When master leaves, the next person who has been in the instance the longest is chosen. Owner deals only with synced objects. This includes object sync, animation sync, and even video syncs. The owner only applies to the object with the script attached and not the children. At start, master owns everything, but internally it is represented as no one owning it. When a player picks up an object, they become the new owner until somebody else picks it up or that player left the instance. Next are the different types of buffering. Buffering is the only way to sync triggers for late joiners. There are three different types. Unbuffered, or none, buffer one, and Buffer all. Unbuffered means it does not save anything for late joiners. This is good for one-time events, like playing a burst of particle effects or playing a sound. Late joiners do not need to see this when they enter the room. Buffer 1 means that when triggered, it will buffer one event for late joiners. When using this, the trigger should be doing something that does not change depending on how many times you call it. This means that buffer 1 and toggle will not sync properly for the late joiners. Always make sure your buffer1 actions are explicit. If you are turning something on, make it set to true. Do not use toggle. The last one is always. This buffers every time a trigger goes off. While you could use this to sync toggles, it's a little overkill. I can't think of that many good examples for the always broadcast type, as it tends to be very specific. The easiest example, though, is spawn object. Late joiners need to know how many times an object has been spawned in order for them to actually sync properly. Anything that deals with proper counting could use always trigger. Okay, now that all this has been described, I can actually start the tutorial. I've used custom triggers in previous tutorials, but didn't really do much with them. Custom triggers are like any other trigger events, except you need to manually call them. Let's start off by building a simple timed event. Start by creating an empty game object. Let's call this timed event. So for this, I'm going to create a button that disables itself and then re-enables itself after a short time. So first thing, go in, create 3 object cube, as I normally do, make it smaller, and then lift it up, add a VRC trigger, and then go into on interact, click add. Since this is a button or is a one-time event, I'm going to change it to always unbuffer doesn't need to disable as soon as someone joins. So go down here, press the plus sign, add a set component active. 
So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to disable the box collider. So drag the cube in here, box collider and false. So the way interact works, if there's a box collider or any collider, it'll use that as the interaction. If you turn it off, you can't interact. So with this, it'll disable itself, but it doesn't turn itself back on. So let's add activate custom trigger, but we don't actually have the custom trigger yet. So click here where it says custom and just click add. So first thing here, this always buffer one, click the advanced checkbox and make it local. Since this is already a broadcast, this needs to be local. Otherwise, you know, broadcasting the more broadcasts. Yeah. In this custom trigger, take the cube, drag it in. It'll automatically add this portion. I forgot to change this. So let's name this enable button. So what will happen, it'll set the component inactive. It'll then call this custom trigger and then it'll do the section here. So we want to set it back to true. We don't need this other custom trigger. And for the delay, let's just make it two seconds. And now we have a timed event. You click the button, it turns it off. We call this custom trigger. It waits two seconds and then it will activate itself. So now that this is done, let's move it out of the way and go to the next example. For this one, I'll show you how to reuse triggers, which will simplify and organize things. The example will be using keyboard input to determine what color of a cube to show. First, let's create a new empty game object. I'm going to call it multi-use. Inside here, I'm going to create three different cubes. I'll just make them much smaller and find my materials here. Uh, this first one, I'm going to color it red, call it red, move it up to one Y, duplicate, green, move it up just a little bit more, and give it the proper shape here. And last, I'll call this blue, move it up more, and blue. These cubes will just be for visualization, but I'm going to put all of my triggers on one single object, which we can create now. So create a new one. I'm going to call it logic and I'm going to add a VRC trigger. So the idea here is that on keyboard down, only one of these cubes will be turned on. So for example, if I press one, let's say the red cube will be turned on, but these two will not. For two, only the green cube and three, only the blue cube. So one way to do this would be on key down event, you then set red enabled and you set green and blue disabled. Another way to do this is to first turn off all of the cubes and then just turn on the one you want. This turning off logic is shared for all of these events. And so we can just make a custom trigger to do that. So first thing, add a custom trigger, check the advance, local, and call this turn off. I am going to add a set game object active, click into here, and a pro tip, if you go up here to the lock button, you can click this, and now this inspector is locked to this game object. I can then now select all three of these and just drag them into the receivers. Make sure to uncheck the lock when you're done. So now let's add our on key down. We go first to on key down, click add, we want to then activate, as I said, for say the one key to activate the red one. And so I'm going to leave this as buffered one just for the example. Take this, remove the other one. So we only want the red cube in this for one and set it to true. Now, basic event, activate custom trigger. I'm going to move this first. Order is important. Drag logic in and turn off. So. What will happen is activate custom trigger, all the cues will be turned off, then red will be turned on. So let's add the next two. If you happen to notice, when you click through this list, on key down no longer appears because we're already using it. I have no idea why, because it's kind of pointless so you can get around it. So click add twice to add two more of these, ignore the steps for now, and actually just come up here to this drop down and click debug. So even though we can't add them from that menu, we can just go and ch change their type. This is extremely helpful for other things. I haven't gone over the tutorial yet, but you can do this with on enter trigger and check for different layers. 
But as I said, I'll go over that in another time. So as I'm just changing these to the different buttons and back into normal. So we have on key down alpha one, on key down alpha two, on key down alpha three. All of them do the same action here. So I just need to change this from the red to the green and this one from the red to the to the blue. So this is just kind of a simple example. When you start getting into either more complex things or having more than just simply three objects, reusing triggers like this will become very helpful. As I mentioned in the beginning with broadcast types, since I'm starting with a global, I must go to a local after. So we're pretty much done with this one. I'll go through and turn off these cubes and then just move this over and we can start with the next example. Next is the sync toggle. I've shown a different version of this before by replacing the button collider itself, but that doesn't work in every situation. This one will use the same button, allowing you to keep the same visual mesh too. Start off by creating an empty. I'll rename this as synced, synced toggle. And underneath that, I will create a cube, call this button, and as usual, shrink it down, lift it up some, and then I will create another cube, create another cube that'll be used to actually toggle. Underneath the button here, create an empty game object, call this enable. Next, add a VRC trigger component, add a custom trigger, leave this as buffered one, and call this enable. And now in here for the actions, I'm going to add two set component actives. In this first one, I'm going to drag itself in here. I'm going to select VRC trigger and I'm going to set it to false. We don't have a second object here, so we'll have to wait on that. And since this is a toggle, I'm going to add a set game object active. Click on this, drag the cube in here, and since I'm on enable, set it to true. Now, for this method to work, you need to go to this delay in seconds and add a tiny non zero value. I'll explain why when we get to the activation stage. Now, duplicate your enabled game object, call this disable, and then inside the set component active here, go to this one that we had empty, drag enable in here, select trigger, and select true. Go back to enable, do the same thing, but drag disable, go to trigger, and set true. Also on the disabled one, make sure that the cube is set to false. So what this is doing, we are first going to set the disables trigger component here to false. So it is no longer active. I will then set the enables to true. So then that one is active. And then perform the actual toggling feature, which this is the part you can change. So the way this really works is that when you have a VRC trigger script and custom triggers, if you disable the script itself, which by the way, disable the one on enable, when it is disabled, this will not run when you try to activate it. It'll see that it should, but because it is disabled, it'll do nothing. This ability to turn off portions of your logic becomes really powerful for the more advanced things. But now that we have this portion set up, let's actually call them. So on your button, Go add another trigger, click the advanced checkbox, go to on interact, add an interact, set this one to local because we are starting with local and then going to a broadcast. So you cannot double broadcast this. Inside here, do two activate custom triggers. In the first one, I'm going to try and activate enable. In the second one, I'm going to try and activate disable. Just notice that disable still says enable, so I'm going to go back here and actually call this disable. And there, now it's proper. So I mentioned before that you need to have this tiny delay amount. And the reason for this is that these actions happen in order. And then when you go down, say, into a custom trigger, it will go through all of those actions first and then move on to these. The reason for the tiny delay is by saying that if you want to delay it, it does not actually execute them. And you don't want them to execute immediately because in certain cases, if you happen to have all of those execute, you will get into a state where it will always end up where 
this one will be the last one executed and it will just never really work properly. So always add a tiny delay when you are trying to activate triggers that disable and enable other triggers within the same call here. With this, our sync toggle is done and we can move on to our final example. This example will be performing different logic depending on if you press the button or not. This different logic per player is necessary for complex object sync related things as owners need to perform different actions than everyone else. So to start off, let's create a new empty and call it a different buttons. Yeah, sure, good enough. Inside that, I'm going to create two cubes. Um, one is going to be red, just like the other ones here. The other one, green. So as with the last time, I'm going to color them so. I am also going to move this up and out of the way here. And just because I'm being lazy, I'm just going to make themselves turn off when they are enabled. So on enable here, local set game object active and give them two seconds and they'll turn themselves off. Okay. Now let's create our button. So create 3D cube. As usual, make it smaller, raise it up, and add a VRC trigger. Click the advanced checkbox and on interact and add. Change this to local. Local is important. Since we're doing on interact local, this is where all of our branching logic will to start taking place. So first thing to do, add a basic event. Activate custom trigger. Next, add two set game objects active. So all of the logic in here will be performed by the person who pushes the button. So what we need to do is take the red cube and turn it off. Next, go to the green cube and turn it on. And that's pretty much it for the person who's clicking the button. But now we need to do the stuff for everybody else. So throw down the custom trigger, click add. And I'm going to just call this others. And this does not need to be buffered. So I'm just going to do unbuffered. I will delete the custom trigger here. I'm going to set the red to true in a time and the green to false. And this is what the others will do. But you now need to go to this activate custom trigger here. Drag this in and make sure it is on others. So just following the logic here. What's going to happen for the person who clicks this button, they will first activate this custom trigger, which tells everybody in the room to turn the red one on, turn the green one off. But this person who clicked the button is still going. They will then say, turn the red one off and turn the green one on. And nobody else will see that. So with this, we just created logic or splitting actions. So whenever you want to do something where people perform different actions, you basically have to tell everyone, including that first person, to do one thing, but then you have to go back and say for the first person to then undo what you just did and then do something else. Since we are starting off with local here, we can then branch off to any of the broadcast types, including another local. But the other portion of this is saying we can actually have multiple types. So if we wanted to, instead of just doing it always unbuffered, we could have another custom trigger here to do, say, something always buffer one, but that's not needed for this example. This different buttons example here is actually done. So, yeah. While everything I showed in this tutorial has been more on the basic side, understanding these concepts and combining them together allows you to make some extremely complex systems. After learning of custom triggers, I pretty much use them everywhere in my creations now. If you have any questions about this tutorial or anything trigger related, I recommend going to Discord instead of the comments. Discord is much faster for answering questions. The official Discord has multiple world-related channels and people who can help you answer these questions. If you want to keep up with what I'm working on for VRChat, you can look at my Twitter or join my Discord. If you want to support me in creating new tutorials or VRChat worlds, visit my Patreon. Until next time, thank you for watching.